In this lesson, we are going to learn about developing Azure functions. Within that, we are going to learn about function folder structure, function code, binding configuration, and binding base code. Let us start with understanding the function folder structure. The code for all the functions in a specific function app is located in a root project folder that contains a host configuration file and one or more subfolders. Each subfolder contains the code for a separate function. The host.json file contains runtime specific configurations and is in the root folder of the function app. A bin folder contains packages and other library files that the function app requires. The functions editor built into the Azure portal lets you update your code and your function.json file directly in line. This is recommended only for small changes or proof of concept. Best practice is to use a local development tool like VS Code. You can use the Azure Functions extension for Microsoft Visual Studio Code to locally develop functions and deploy them to Azure. By using the Azure Functions extension, you can edit, build, and run functions on your local development computer, publish your Azure Functions project directly to Azure, and write your functions in various languages while utilizing the benefits of Visual Studio Code. Let's look at Azure Functions in Visual Studio. Azure Functions is a built-in project type for Visual Studio that lets you develop, test, and deploy C-sharp functions to Azure. So by using the Azure Functions project type enables you to edit, build, and run functions, publish it to your Azure Functions project directly by Azure, or you could use web jobs attributes to declare functions bindings directly to the C-sharp code instead of maintaining a separate function.json for binding definitions. Then you can create your functions in C-sharp while retaining all the benefits of Visual Studio development. So let's look at a function code. The C-sharp class represents a basic queue storage trigger function. A binding specific attribute is applied to each binding parameter supplied to the entry point method. The attribute takes the binding information as parameters. Suppose you want to write a new row to Azure table storage whenever a new message appears in the Azure queue storage. You can implement this scenario by using the Azure queue storage trigger and an Azure table storage output binding. The first element in the binding array is the queue storage trigger. The second element in the binding array is the Azure table storage output binding. Here is the C sharp script code that works with the trigger and binding. Notice that the name of the parameter that provides the queue message content is order. This name is required because the name property value in the function.json is order. So let us look into the function app settings. Any settings that you add in the local.settings.json must be also added to the function app in Azure. These settings are not uploaded automatically when you publish the project. The easiest way to upload the required setting to your function app in Azure is to use the manage application setting link that is displayed after you successfully publish your project. You can also manage application settings in the other ways. Other ways are by either using an Azure portal or by using published local settings publish option in the Azure Functions core tools. Or you can use Azure CLI as well. That concludes this lesson. In the next lesson, we are going to learn about how to implement durable functions. So I will see you on the next one. Until then, take care.